Hello everyone and welcome to another incredible game that was played in round 4 or rather in the tiebreaks of round 4 of this year's FIDE World Cup. It is Pregnananda vs Hikaru Nakamura and this is the second game of their match. I'm pretty sure you've already heard what happened and you've seen the first game and most likely the second one. Uh, but so many of you are requesting it. Uh, I mean it's, uh, I mean, it's just a, a privilege to watch uh, classical chess being played like this because... Uh, well, uh, uh, for those of you who still haven't seen it, I don't want to spoil too much. Uh, but it was basically uh, like taking a, a, a stroll through the park. Uh, so we're going to discuss this a little bit later. Uh, but uh, Prague won the first game. He already trapped Hikaru's piece on move 9. Hikaru blundered terribly. Uh, Prague Nananda took advantage of that. He defeated him very nicely. And now Hikaru needs to bounce back uh, in order to... Um, uh, well, to force further tie breaks. So let's check it out. Uh, Prague has the white pieces and he opens with pawn to e4. We have pawn to d6, uh, we have d4 and pawn to g6. Hikaru opts for the modern defense or the, or the robash defense. We have knight to f3 and bishop to g7. We have bishop to c4. Uh, Prague wasn't really um, stressed out by this uh, modern defense idea by Hikaru. He probably was expecting it as Hikaru does tend to use it from time to time when he is in a must win situation so probably Prague was prepared for even that knight to c6 and now pawn to h3 we have knight to f6 and now queen to e2 uh, pawn to e5 and now d captures on e5 and Prague was very happy going into this position I can only imagine as he defeated none other than Magnus Carlsen from this exact same position uh, in the crypto uh, FTX crypto cup in uh, last year uh, but Magnus continued with knight captures on e5 here Hikaru deviates from the Magnus game he plays d captures on e5 and now there is a game where c3 was played but here Prague just castles and it is now already as of move 8 that we have a completely new game. Now this is a great position for white but Hikaru is in a must win situation so he's also definitely happy with a completely new game already on move 8. We have castles by Hikaru as well. Rook to d1 attacking Hikaru's queen and now bishop to d7. We have knight to c3 going for that d5 square and queen to c8 unpinning from the rook on the d file. Bishop to g5 and now rook to e8. Prague goes knight to d5 as all trades favor him. It's uh, I mean he already won the first game he only needs a draw in the second one and now if this wasn't a must win situation probably Hikaru would just capture uh, and then after bishop or, or pawn captures go knight to a5 the game continues it's a nice position for both white and black but as he is in a must win situation he goes for knight to h5 uh, queen to d2 now trying to take advantage of the dark squares um, as the knight no longer uh, attacks the knight on d5 or the pawn on e4 and now bishop to e6 uh, just, uh, uh, you know, get, getting more, uh, well, more uh, more of a better square for the bishop. Bishop to b5 by Prague and now pawn to f6 with bishop to h6 and king to h8. And here Prague trades. Bishop captures with king captures and queen to c3 now. Nicely aligning with the queen with the black king here. Bishop back to d7 and now rook to d2. Prague now ready to double up on the d-file. As Hikaru by playing bishop to d7, he did put it on a bit of an awkward square. Once this rook comes to d1, it's going to put pressure uh, on the, on the d-file. So a6 and now bishop to a4. We have pawn to b5 by Hikaru and just bishop to b3. So uh, now controlling this diagonal, this diagonal and the knight is brilliantly placed here on d5. So you can see uh, uh, how, how different of an approach it is uh, from when Magnus lost his game to Vincent he played a really really long grueling game in order to bounce back but Hikaru decided to just go all out here we have rook to a7 and rook a to d1 and now yeah, okay you can just allow the knight to move and your bishop to um, uh, be, uh, get under attack so knight to b8 by Hikaru defending the bishop but the game is already lost Prague is completely winning here and as he already won the first game this means that he is now ready to kick out uh, Hikaru from the world chess champion uh, from the uh, FIDE world Cup. Uh, so feel free to pause the video and try to find the move that uh, uh, wins the game for Prague while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations uh, on spotting that the rook on a7 is undefended. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is queen to c5. It's not just because the rook on a7 is undefended, but because uh, you, you also gain access to the e7 square. And now the problem is, how do you defend here? You can defend the rook by moving the rook or by actually defending the rook. Now, moving the rook looks nice uh, until you see knight to e7. 
attacking the black queen and now after queen to d8 there's this beautiful knight to c6 and now of course the bishop cannot capture because the rook captures queen and once uh, or uh, if you capture with the knight then you you've removed the defender of the bishop so just rook captures on d7 so queen has to go back and now you just eliminate the knight here and next you eliminate the bishop and that's it game over so hikaru had to go for the other line that is queen to b7 uh, but it doesn't help him as Prague finds this beautiful pawn to g4 which traps the knight on h5. It doesn't just trap the knight, you might uh, be thinking, well, what about knight to f4? Uh, sure, knight to f4, you, you can just capture it, or you can even play knight captures on f6, it doesn't really matter, because then <laughs> rook captures on d7, uh, I mean, so many lines here are winning, it's, it's hard to find a move here, even knight captures on h3 with check can be played, uh, you're gonna play king to h2, attack the knight, and now, how do you defend this? The, the, the bishop here is hanging, the rook is hanging, also the rooks are attacking the bishop, the knight is hanging, this is just dead lost for uh, Hikaru, so instead after g4, c6 was played, and here Hikaru knew he was already uh, not just lost in this game but also out of the FIDE World Cup uh, he played it very quickly he didn't even look at the position all that much uh, Prague played knight to b6 which is also the strongest move recommended by the engine putting up uh, a triple attack here on the bishop on d7 knight to f4 by Hikaru and now just knight captures on d7 we have pawn to a5 uh, not much you can do here knight captures on b8 rook captures and now queen captures on a7 again so many winning ideas here you could play knight captures on e5 f captures queen captures attack the king the knight uh, but this just ends the game on the spot uh, queen captures on a7 rook to d7 check even with a temporary po uh, queen sacrifice Queen captures, Rook captures with check, and now King to H6. Hikaru uh, is no longer uh, even playing this game. He is uh, merely coming to terms with this new reality that he is eliminated from the FIDE World Cup. G5 check by Prague with F captures and Knight captures on E5. He, uh, now Prague is up a full piece, but of course he still has to play very precise moves uh, because if anyone can come back from a dead loss position, it is definitely Hikaru, and he will try. Uh, pawn to G4 with H captures, King to G5 now. Uh, pawn to f3, just not allowing him any chances, pawn to h5, we have captures, captures, and now knight to d3, offering a trade of knights, we have a4 attacking the bishop, and bishop to f7 by Prague, h4, Hikaru does have the past h pawn, so it could be a, a little bit unpleasant, but now king to h2, we have knight to e2, and now bishop to e6. Uh, we have pawn to b4 by Hikaru, rook to f7, and now knight to d4, attacking the bishop, but f4 with check, king to h6, and bishop to f5, uh, sorry, after f4 check, king to h6, bishop to f5, and he was in this position on move 41 that Hikaru Nakamura resigned the game, as there is nothing more to be done here. Uh, you are faced with checkmate here, and if you want to avoid checkmate, you have to give up one of your pieces, and you really don't want to do that since you're already down a piece, and after he captures, there's just no move you can play. This is covered by the pawn, this is covered by the pawn, by the rook, by the rook, and, uh, well, you're just gonna get checkmated whatever you play. You can even allow black to bring a queen into the game, it's that funny. Let's say knight to e5, a captures on b2, almost bringing a queen into the game, knight g4 check, king to h5, knight f6 check, king to h6, and now rook to h7 will be checkmate. It's okay, almost bringing a queen into the game. Uh, but everything, absolutely everything loses here for Hikaru. So that's what I meant uh, at the beginning of the video, that it, was, uh, it, it wasn't a walk in the park, of course, beating Hikaru is no walk in the park, but the way Prague defeated him in the first game and in the second game, uh, he definitely made it seem like it was a walk in the park. So brilliant stuff by Pragnananda uh, going into the, the final 16 of the FIDE World Cup 2023. Uh, we're going to see how he does. And uh, these are the uh, remaining participants of the FIDE World Cup. So let's check it out. Uh, Magnus Carlsen will be facing none other than the Slayer of Champions, Vasil Ivanchuk, who, uh, I don't know, for those of you who are maybe new to chess, uh, at one point during the Doha, uh, Qatar, uh, FIDE World Rapid and Blitz Championship, Ivanchuk actually defeated Magnus uh, two games in a row so uh, if anyone can take down Magnus and anyone else for that matter it is Vasily Vanchuk. Van Hau will be facing Gukesh also uh, uh, I mean a brutal brutal matchup. Nijat Abasov uh, who eliminated Peter Sviller will be uh, facing Salem Saleh. Vidit will be facing Yanni Pomneshi the former world championship challenger. Also another former world championship challenger Fabiana Caruana will be facing the winner of the FIDE World Cup 2021 Young Shishtov Duda who also eliminated Magnus Carlsen in the semi-finals. Uh, the uh, Lanier Dominguez Perez will be facing Alexis Sarana, Arjun Ergesi will be facing Nils Grandelius, and uh, Pregnananda, who defeated Hikaru, will be facing Ferenc Berkesh. So, those are the final 16. Uh, well, I mean, it's anyone's guess uh, what will happen.
happen but uh you know uh, what is what is definitely that will happen is that we will be enjoying some uh, excellent chess uh so yeah uh, once again really hope you guys uh, enjoyed it uh, uh, very nicely done by all of them uh i would like to uh, I would like to thank uh, my wife beats any wife at chess, Angus Cunningham, Peter Booth, Nagarjuna Ponugoti, and uh, Philip uh, Hextenberg for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. Uh, as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you for watching, and I will see you soon, continuing the coverage of the FIDE World Cup uh, until it finishes. Uh, so thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.